I'm Shane from SM Flooring Solutions. We're collaborating together with Ardex for this next project. So this project entails a lot of preparation side of things. So there is a anhydrite floor. So we will be talking about how to prep an anhydrite floor ready for smoothing compound. We'll be grinding the floor with uh, our Yancey Calibri grinding machines. Once it's sufficient enough and we're happy with everything, then we're going to be applying the Ardex primer, the new smoothing compound from Ardex. And then what we're going to be doing for this client is doing a herringbone design. And hydrate floor is, is a great subfloor. It gets pumped in, it finds its own level really quickly. It's, it's a fantastic product, cheap product and quick to install originally. However, whoever installed the anhydrite needs to come back to grind the latents off. So for us, we're gonna remove our latents. We're gonna use a grinding machine. So this is Yance's Calibri grinder. So what is latents? Latents is the weakest part of this compound. So the compound is a fantastic compound, but the latents is the weak side of things. This latents looks like concrete. This anhydrite in whole looks like concrete. It's like a slightly waxy feel, slightly waxy touch to it. So that's how we tend to differ. So if the floor is grinded, it's very hard then to see if it's an, a, an hard right floor or not. But lucky enough, the client today is let us know the latent has not been removed, so we've come prepared to remove that latent. If we don't remove the latent, we put our smoothing compound down, we put our floor finishing LVT down, it will fail. That latent isn't removed, the floor will just pop off. It's going to be a time and expense for you if you don't prepare the floor properly. On average, it's going to cost you about three to five times as much to get the project done right again. If you're unaware of what subfloor it is, you can get specialist guys to come out there and test the floor. They will test your moisture levels as well. We've done a little bit and next to the old section. So the old section looks a little bit waxy feel. So with our correct grinding setup, it makes light work. So as we can sort of like see, it looks like a concrete floor. It looks like a sand and cement mixture floor, but it's not actually, it is an actual anhydrite floor. So what we're going to be doing next, we'll be going over the main area with our grinding setup. Then we're going to go around the edges with our little palm grinder as well. Once the latent has been removed, that's when we can do our moisture checks. We can't really do our moisture checks before the latent is removed because it's, it's got like a barrier there. So we need to remove the latent, then do our moisture checks. There's loads of different ways how we can do our moisture checks. So same again, Ardex will come out and do a specification for you at your request. But what we've got here, we've got our little Tramex box. It's got different settings. So for our, the correct subfloor that you're gonna use, so this is a great indication whether the floor is wet or dry. If this reading is bone dry, we still want to give it a, the correct test. So we can get a box to be installed and get the true reading that way. Most anhydrite floors normally go over under floor heating. So we've got to be careful if you're going to start drilling test holes in the floor. That way then we'll have to grind a little section, then put the box. Then we have to come back at a later date to then get the true reading. Same again, this is a very good indication, but the box is what we need. Once it's dry and we're happy with our readings, that's when we can then proceed to our smoothing compound. So once the subfloor has been mechanically removed, so that, that latent has been removed, that weak layer is gone. So we're going to apply a water-based smoothing compound. Before we apply a water-based smoothing compound, we always have to prime. Ardex do do uh, a latex based bag and a bottle, which doesn't need to be primed, but it's always best practice to prime. You get a better flow rate, better, better bond with that subfloor as well. But because we're gonna be using a water base today, we're gonna make sure it's priming. So regarding the prime, with the dilution rates, every subfloor will require a different dilution rate. If you're unsure about the dilution rate, please ring up the technical services line. But for today, I know the ratio will be three to one. They don't recommend using a hand roller, a little paint roller. So we find using a brush will get into the concrete a bit better. It, it opens up all those little pores in the concrete, more primer in there. So with, with the roller, we find we don't, there's not, not enough primer that gets on the floor. 
See, with the brush motion, we get it really worked onto that, top, that slab. So for, for what we're gonna be doing today, we'll be going around the edges first with a one inch, two inch paintbrush is absolutely fine. So you can pre-wet the paintbrush and then go around the perimeter. Once the perimeter is done, we are then gonna get our broom, making sure it's a clean broom for that project for that today. Pour that onto the floor and apply it using the brush. Making sure we've put masking tapes on the skirting to so making sure the client's house doesn't get damaged by applying the primer or the smoothing compound. As you can see, we've applied the primer using the brush method. We can see the primer slowly soaking in to that subfloor. With the brush, you'd be surprised how much primer you actually use. So obviously with a roller, we don't put nowhere near enough primer on the floor. And we end up taking the primer and dragging it across. So with the brush, it actually works into the, con or into the slab a bit better. So we want to make sure that subfloor is fully primed correctly. So we're not just going to crack on and get our smoothing compound done. We're, this time of year, it's quite nice and warm. We've got to be careful that floor temperature doesn't get too warm. So over to my left, we've had to cover the windows with some sheeting, some paper felt, some lining paper will do absolutely great. We need to keep that floor temperature nice and cool for the compound to work correctly because it can dry out too quickly. Once that's done, we're going to select our smoothing compound. So today we're going to be using the K40 Flow. It's a water-based. On the back of every water-based smoothing compound, there will be a recommended guidance for your water. So this one, they recommend up to five and a half litres. On thicker applications, you can reduce them, the quantity of water. Also, it's walk on after two hours. So if you are tight for time, it's walkable after two hours. That's a great turnaround for the customer. You can lay on this as little as six hours, depending on site conditions and depending if the moisture levels are correct. And the, and the floor, the smoothing compound, is actually cured correctly. So we're going to apply the smoothing compound today and we're going to go back on another following day to install our floor coverings. So now the primer is fully gone off, we're going to apply the smoothing compound. There is a couple of ways we can apply the smoothing compound. We can use the troweling method, which will work absolutely fine. You can see with this high flow compound, it doesn't need a lot of work at all. So we get it into the corners. Don't be afraid to put some of the compound on the floor. A lot of people tend to struggle is not to put enough on the floor to start off with. Don't be afraid to get it on the floor and then work with the material you've got. There's also another method you can do. For larger areas, you can use rakes, cam rakes, you can use pin levelers. So you set these at the correct depth you require. Once you've done that, then we can go over it with a spiked roller, aeration roller is also called, to help get rid of any imperfections in the floor, helps release any of the air bubbles. If you're not happy with a little section, you can keep going over it with a spiked roller. And in theory, it can pick up some compound and move it over a turn as well. So it helps get any imperfections you're not happy with to get rid of them as well. So another key tool to get is an aeration roller. A handy little tip is where the kickboards are, you can either put a bit of decorator's cork, uh, some barrier foam, so that thickness of compound is going to be correct. So if we don't put that something there to stop it, that compound is going to flow back to underneath the unit and it's not going to be the correct thickness. Especially with, on this project there was grinding involved, we can't get the grinding machines to go underneath the unit. So we have to make sure we get our barrier foam or decorator's cork or some sort of description to stop it flowing through to help with the correct thickness throughout. So you can come in next day to start fitting your resilient floor covering if you wish but this project we're going to give it the weekend to cure and we'll be back Monday morning. 
So we've come back, we've applied our smoothing compound, we come back to ready to our, install our product. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna check our surface regularity levels, SR levels. We have, our floor layers have to get it to surface regularity one. So that floor's gotta be pretty bang on. Way you, you can test that is get a two meter straight edge and we can test the levels over a two meter straight edge. As we can see, it's pretty bang on. Because the flow capabilities of Ardex product, it, it saves a lot of hassles. If there is a little bit of imperfections, we can then use the Ardex feather finish to help with any imperfections in the floor. Or as we're out on site where we are, there's a couple of flies that accidentally flew into the smoothing compounds. We have to then resolve that situation as well. So we're gonna repair the area with some Ardex feather finish. We're gonna make sure we're gonna stick to the same system throughout the whole install. So we're gonna use an Ardex smoothing compound, a feather finishing compound, and we're also gonna use the same adhesives as well. So we're gonna stick to the same system throughout the whole install. So we've checked our surface regularity levels. We're happy with that. If you've got a little, like little boulders in the floor, do one thing or another, we can either go around with a little bit of sandpaper, just to go, just to take off any high points of the imperfection, or around the perimeters also using the scraper method as well, which is absolutely fine. Or if you feel comfortable enough, you can use this to go around the perimeter of the room. So what I like to do is just give the whole area just a little bit of a skim over with some sandpaper. Just be careful not to over sandpaper as well. We're just taking that little bit of dustiness off. Right, so what we're gonna be talking about next is Ardex's feather finish. So if there is any little imperfections in the floor, what we just mentioned a little while ago, we could then apply this compound. So it is a finishing compound. So the aggregates are very, very fine in it. So it goes down to a true feather finish, hence the name. So to mix the feather finish, all the instructions will be on the back of their bag. Any technical advice you need for that product as well, on the back of the bag, there'll be a technical advice line for you guys to bring. I know it's gonna be a ratio of two to one. So I've already pre-measured it out and put it into my bucket. So we've mixed it for an adequate amount of time. So it's gonna be a lump-free consistency of the floor as well. So just a simple, by applying this to the floor, you'd be surprised how far this product will actually go. So if, if there is any imperfections in the floor, it will get rid of those little imperfections if there is any in the floor. But like we mentioned earlier on, with their smoothing compound, it's such a high flow rate smoothing compound, there's not a lot of need for feather finishing on this particular job, which is also a good news. So we have a little saying back at home, is the five Ps. Perfect preparation prevents poor performance. So it's all in your prep work. If your prep work's not there, the end result's not gonna be there. So you've got to be perfect in your preparation. So with this, it's always on our van just to get that job perfect. Okay, so we're almost ready to start laying our luxury vinyl tiles in that herringbone design. So we've had to do a lot of math work first. Once we've done our maths correctly and we figure out where we're going to start from, then we can start installing the tiles. Before we do anything, we have to do our glue selection for our project. So our project is over quite a large area, not quite a large square meterage. But what's a few factors involved is to my left is some self-facing windows. Over to my right, there is some more bifold doors. So there's a lot of areas what's gonna get a lot of high temperature. So a high temperature adhesive will be required. But Ardex, they do a heavy duty one component. That's very good for high influxations of sun. So it is a water resistant adhesive as well. So it can be used for internal as well as external applications. There's no mixing required with this bucket. So we can just take the lid off, use what we need to use, put the lid back on ready for our next project. So there's a minimal waste required, uh, well, minimum waste as well. So when we do our maths side of things, 
A tape measure will be absolutely sufficient. Get yourself a little ruler. A ruler we tend to find a little bit more accurate than a tape measure. So definitely get yourself a ruler is, is my little handy tip. So every job, every start of the job, we'll use a fresh trowel. So this one is, is we can change the trowel per project. So we have to make sure there's a right, well, right thickness of glue applied to the floor on every single job. As you can probably see to my, my right, we're gonna use a lot of masking tape. So masking tape is, is our best friend on applications of any type of LVT floor. So it helps marking things out on the floor for you, helps get the tiles nice and tight as well for you. So it, it's, it's a floor layer, it's like handy tip as well. So don't be afraid to get yourself a lot of masking tape. So we're gonna open up the heavy duty one component. So nice foiled lid. If we was just doing a small bathroom and we only needed a fraction amount of glue, so you've poured as much glue as what you need on the floor once you've finished and put this back on top as well so it saves the glue, so it saves the glue from skinning over. So when we glue, we're gonna go right up to the edges. If you're a bit concerned about the glue going up the skirting, there's nothing stopping you then masking tape on the skirting if you wish. A little handy tip is we've marked the floor with some masking tape and we can gonna glue a fraction over the masking tape. If we've done a pencil lines on the floor, it's a lot more human error of me not getting it flat, ideally on those pencil lines. So it could, I could over glue the area. So it takes a little bit of time to get the glue where it needs to start off with. But once we get going, it doesn't take too long at all to apply the glue. On the back of all of Ardex's adhesives, it tells you on the back, it tells you about the opening time, the working time with it. So any information you need will always be on the back of their tub. If you need a little bit of help with something, you're not quite sure with something, the technical advice line is on the back of most of their products for you to give a ring for any help you need. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna get our area glued out. We're gonna read the back of the tub to how long we need to air it for. So air it, it means we put the glue on the floor, we're gonna leave it to air for a certain amount of time. Once the airing time's completed, then we can then fit the tiles. So we've applied our heavy duty one component. We've given it the correct airing time. We've now removed the masking tape, so it gives us a nice clean edge, 100% tile coverage is what we needed. So with that airing time, it might extend or reduce, depending on site conditions. So we've got our tiles in, they've been acclimatized correctly as the manufacturers have specified for their product. However, you're that last line of quality control. So it might pass, there's several checks, but you're that last line. So I'm just keeping an eye out on a few tiles. So as we can already see, I've got a pile of tiles that will probably be no good at the moment because they might be slightly damaged in transit. So you've got to be that last line of quality control. As soon as we're happy, then we can start installing the tiles. So as I'm working with the tiles, I'm just dusting the back of the tile off just to make sure there's any, no debris at all on the back of the tile. Just give that last little check of quality and then we put the tiles in. Any little glue spillages? I'm not too concerned at the moment because what Ardex also do is their cleaning wipes. So we can also clean the adhesive off the tiles afterwards as well. So if you don't give it the correct airing time, by the time you put the tiles in, it, you, you'll end up getting a lot of glue spillages or so coming through the tile. So that cleaning wipes is really great and handy to have. So once we're happy with the tiles, what you can then do is put some masking tape over the tiles, because this in theory is a wet set adhesive. So it's not like they're pressure sensitive adhesive, once it's in, that's it. So with being wet set, it's gonna take a little bit of time to go off. So just a little bit of tape, just to hold it in in situ.
we're going to work small areas at a time. So once you're happy with that first area, then we can move on to the next section. So the next bit we're going to be talking about is RDX's AF148. So it's a contract pressure sensitive adhesive. So we've done our subfloor preparations. We're happy with everything. We've marked the floor out for the, our project. So with our pressure sensitive adhesive, it's a very, very good adhesive depending on site conditions. So making sure there's no direct sole again. If there is, then we'll have to use something a bit different. But for this bit, we're going to use the pressure sensitive because the, our project and things allow for it. Our next thing we need to do is our trowel selection. So Ardex, on the back of their tub, it tells me that I need to use an A1 size notch trowel. What we're going to do with an A1 size notch trowel, we're going to trowel onto the floor and then we're going to leave it to cure. If you're stuck a bit of time or it's a bit of a, a cold day, a bit of a, so what you can do, you can help the aid of drying with a fan, just blowing the airflow on it, making sure you're keeping away any dust as well. So we want to try and keep that floor as clean as we possibly can. So with the RX148 pressure sensitive contract, we're not gonna want glue transfer to the back of our tile. We need this to go off completely. So I'm gonna glue the rest of the area out, get my fan in, and I'm gonna leave that to dry. It depends on the site conditions and where you work and how that airing times may be affected. But it doesn't take too long at all. So in this area, we use the AF148, which is absolutely a great adhesive. It can go over under floor heating, which is fantastic. So it can be classed as a high temperature adhesive. So why have I only stopped halfway, might you ask? So just behind me, there's a rather large window and a rather large door, big planes of glass. So through my site visits, what I've done, I know it's gonna be a high solar gain area. So anywhere like a conservatory, high sun points, I need to then change my D's of selection. So I'm going to go with the RDX one component, heavy duty one component. How far back you go, you've got to be the judgment for that one. So there's no set rules, but I know from my site visit how far I need to go back with my heavy duty one component and D's of. So we're going to get half of it fitted and then the other half we then use the heavy duty D's of.
So we've finished our installation process on this project, which has looked absolutely fantastic. So there is another thing that we need to do. We need to give that customer a handover. So we need to tell the customer how to look after the floor, how to maintain the floor, how to preserve it from, from getting damaged and things. So at the end of, end of the process, we'll explain to the customer how to look after the floor, the best what the manufacturers recommend. We'll, for the, wherever product you lay on the floor, the manufacturers will give you a maintenance kit or, or, or a maintenance guide, shall we say. Give that to the customer. It's very key and important you do that as well. Simple things by getting them some felt pads for anything that's going to move helps to protect the floor as well. So get yourself a set of felt pads and also a cleaning kit. So same again, depends what manufacturers do. They'll supply their own or they can supply their own or cleaning kit. If not, you can buy like this one here, which comes with a full kit. We can give that to the customer for their general maintenance and hand to hand cleaning of the floor. On this project, we've used the K40. We've used a pressure sensitive contract. We've used the Ardex Heavy Duty 1K adhesive. But there is other adhesives out there on what Ardex do. There's also different smoothing compounds, what Ardex do. If you want any more information on Ardex products, you go on Ardex Depot UK or ring up their technical helpline for further information on their products.